It's June 16th, 1999, and we are minutes away from Game 1 of the NBA Finals. On one side, we have the San Antonio Spurs, who resoundingly steamrolled through the competition this season, finishing first in the West and losing just one game on their route to the NBA Finals. On the other side, we have the New York Knicks, one of the last teams you would have expected to make it this far in the competition. Their route here was not only a grueling one, but a historic one. They're the first and only ever 8 seed to make an NBA final. How did we get to this point? How did such a disappointing season turn to one of the most entertaining ones for Knicks fans? For that, we have to go back, all the way to the off season. The 98-99 off season wasn't like your typical off season. The league was not only going through a transitional period, waving bye to one of its icons, but was enduring. A brutal 204 day lockout. Players were not allowed access to team facilities, trainers, and staff. An agreement was finally reached, but it came at a cost. Compressing a 50 game regular season into 90 days. Insane, right? But before the Knicks could even start the season, the front office shook up the roster trading fan favorites and integral pieces that made the Knicks a powerhouse in the 90s. They shipped Charles Oakley, one of the top rebounders in the game, and a player who embodied Knicks culture for young and up-and-comer Marcus Camby. And they traded John Starks, who everyone in New York loved, and who was Patrick Ewing's best friend, for someone who not many loved. Latrell Sprewell was coming off one of the worst suspensions in league history, after he decided to choke his coach during a heated exchange. The last offseason pickup the Knicks front office made was signed the barely treading Kurt Thomas. These moves were not only unpopular with the fans, but the coach. Jeff Van Gundy was tasked with getting this group ready for the season in less than a month. It started off well. The Knicks won 9 of their first 14 games. That honeymoon phase ended quickly. The Knicks, though one of the best defensive teams in the league, were terrible on the offensive end. Van Gundy had a real issue piecing the new and old talent together. He could not figure out a winning formula and it didn't help his aging star and new pieces were coming in and out of the lineup with injuries. That inability to find a winning formula grew frustration with Knicks GM Ernie Grunfeld. He wanted Van Gundy to play more of a fast pace with the new acquisitions. These deferring philosophies of play drew an ire between the two, with multiple reports coming out of a possible firing of the coach. It made a rocky season even rockier, and with 8 games left in the season, having lost 4 straight, the Knicks sat outside the playoffs with a 21-21 record. Then something shocking happened. Dave Chekins, president of Knicks basketball, fired Grunfeld, with just 2 weeks left in the season. The Knicks would win 6 of their last 8 games to just barely squeak into the playoffs as an 8 seed. Their first round matchup, a more than familiar foe, the Miami Heat. They have met in the last two postseasons, and it's quite an understatement to say these two teams don't like each other. They have to fight for this series. PJ Brown throws Charlie Warren, watch out. This one's gonna get really ugly. P.J. Brown picked Charlie Ward up and threw him into the photographer's row. And fists are flying at the other end. Wow. Larry Johnson is one of them. Here we go. Oakley and Morning have at each other. And both of those guys will not play in game five. What bothers these two teams about each other is they are carbon copies of each other. They have the same culture, philosophy, coaching, and style of play. They can read each other like a book. And for the Knicks, that was ideal. The Heat were a team they knew and a team they just knocked out last year. It gave them confidence coming into the series, and it showed right away in Game 1. Playing their best basketball of the season, steamrolling the Heat to take Game 1 and home court advantage. Real. Here comes Sprewell. That didn't last long because the Knicks would revert back to their old ways, 
dropping two of their next three games, putting the series in a deadlock and sending them packing to Miami to play the all-deciding Game 5. Let's get ready, Rumble! The game went back and forth, blow for blow, with neither team able to pull away from each other. And as the game started winding down, the Heat made their move. Alonzo took a hook shot. Seven on the shot clock. Alonzo Mourning, the jump hook rattles down. Alonzo Mourning has 21 points. Putting the Heat up by one. The Knicks season all came down to this moment, the last play of the game. Let's see what happens. The tie or win the ball game, four seconds. Van Gundy calls a play, a triangle. That usually means something for Ewing. Out of Houston. Houston ducks under. Got it! With eight tenths left. Amazing, right? A game winner by Allen Houston to upset the number one seed and punch the Knicks ticket to the second round. There they met the Atlanta Hawks. At this point, the Knicks were rolling. The chemistry was flowing. Everyone knew their roles and it was evident their offseason acquisitions were trouble. Unlucky for the Hawks because that series can be summed up with this one play. He picks up his third foul down the other end. Camby makes his move. Marcus Camby, what a play! With authority! Yeah, the reverberating... The Knicks convincingly clipped the Hawks in four games making them the first ever 8 seed to make an appearance in the conference finals. Celebrations were short because they knew who was coming next. The battle-tested Indiana Pacers. This is a team the Knicks have run into repeatedly in the 90s and have been sent home by them in their last two matchups. So the Knicks came into game 1 throwing haymakers right from the get-go to set the tone of the series. The Pacers were able to climb back from this deficit and the game became a back and forth affair. With the game winding down, the Pacers had one last chance. Mullen inbounds the ball to Jackson. Jackson has it. Forces up a three over Childs. Short, the underdog New York Knicks pull off the shocker in game one. The Knicks take the series lead. In game two, the Pacers came out swinging, building a 17-point lead before halftime. But this underdog Knicks group was able to chip away at it just enough for a chance at a shot to send the game to overtime. Two seconds to play. Childs. And the Indiana Pacers have tied the Eastern Conference titles at one win apiece. The loss came with a devastating blow to the franchise. Patrick Ewing's nagging injuries in the regular season caught up with him and he was ruled out for the remainder of the season. That didn't stop the resilient Knicks from competing in Game 3. They made adjustments giving Camby more minutes, and he was feasting, contributing 21 points off the bench on 9 of 13 shooting. The Knicks though still found themselves trailing in the dire moments of Game 3. The score right now is 91-88, and there's less than 10 seconds left in the game. If the Knicks can sink this three here, they can possibly take the game to overtime and steal it. If they miss it, the Pacers will get a stranglehold on the series. Let's see what happens. If it gets late, the, the Pacers can foul to put them on the line. Ward had it tipped. Johnson made a good catch. Johnson is fouled. And And now he's got to make one, and when they rushed him, he said, leave me alone. I got to make a free throw here. And the game's a long way from being over. Got it. Larry Johnson hits one of the greatest shots in playoff history to steal the game right from under the Pacers' nose. The Pacers never truly recovered from this, and the Knicks put him away in six games and became the only team in league history to make an NBA Finals as an 8th seed. An improbable story, likely to never be seen again due to the various circumstances the organization was put in. This is Earn Your Ranks, where we only talk about ball, signing off. Oh, if you're wondering what happened in the finals, the batter Knicks were simply just outmatched by the Tim Duncan led Spurs. They were able to take a game, but that's all the series wrote for them. This is Earn Your Ranks, 
where we only talk about ball. Signing off.